Okay, great. Well, again, I want to welcome everybody this morning. Um, uh, what uh, what I went before is that I am um, taking for granted that everybody is a little bit familiar with the program, have used it in the past, and uh, uh, is pretty much familiar with the, the basics. So what I really want to do today is go through uh, the, the program. I'm going to take an a, a example uh, for a report and uh, go through this thing and try to emphasize the, uh, the new features of this uh, so that anybody um, that has used this in the past will be familiar with the, the different formatting uh, and configuration that we're using now. Uh, but the basics of it is still basically the same. All right, so um, I'm going to go ahead and close out of this. I actually have a link here on the desktop, and I'm going to assume that if you guys are start using this, you, there would be some download pr uh, procedure that would automatically put something on your desktop. All right, so basically when you want to get into the program, you just click on the, the link like you would any other program. Uh, you guys are... You guys are going to um, have to have a username and a password uh, in relationship to um, to um, however many users uh, of that company will will have, uh, and then you'll be able to log in and go straight to it. Again, this is a cloud-based program, um, and you'll pretty much come up to. Um, I'm really not sure of what screen you'll come up to uh, at first. Uh, I come up to this one, I think, as I was in it last. But this is uh, the, the layout is pretty much similar, whereas before we have a, we had a column with all the subject headings here. Uh, now you'll see that they are up uh, on the top, like a like a normal uh, Microsoft kind of or web kind of uh, configuration. You have uh, design codes, file cabinet, engineering data your API 653 AST and contacts. All right, so the first thing you have here is design codes where the old uh, access program you used to have to take your, your design codes that you would have in PDF and, and do a save as, save them into uh, files, folders that, that came with the program. Uh, and then you would have to name them exactly the name that, that the placeholder had in order for it to be the link to the program. Well, this time, all you have to do is uh, under whatever, you know, choose the tab under which heading it would belong. And package, we're going to need another tab that just says other, okay? Okay. And then uh, let's say it's an ASME uh, code. Now all you do is just choose your file and then say upload, and there it is. You have it available. Uh, it's uh, much easier, quicker, and simpler than, than the previous program, and that's the same that you would do for any one of these. Okay. Uh, same thing for the file cabinet. Uh, it's basically have th you have three headings here. You have Word files, uh, MS Excel files, and PDF files. So any of you, any uh, documents that you've developed uh, over the years that you want to have easy access, quick access to. You can link them uh, in, into the file cabinet the exact same way. You just go down here, you choose a file. Um, I don't know if I... Is, are you there? It looks like we lost you there, Jeff. Give me one second. Yeah. Hello. There you go. There you go. Yeah. Jeff. Okay. One more time. Looks like. Jeff, are you there? I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes, we can now. Go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. Um. Okay. So, and there it is. Um, uh, Any time you need it. Okay. Uh, and now you have the engineering data, and under engineering data, uh, before we had uh, listed your AST calcs, your piping calcs, 
then you had uh, uh, material specs. Well, now you have them all here in, in uh, one shot, okay? Uh, basically divided into sections. In this case, you have AST calcs. And for right now, for this, this, uh, this, uh, this is uh, a, a, a period that we're doing beta testing. Uh, you guys volunteered to do beta testing. Uh, the beta testing is mostly related to the going to be related to the uh, report builder. There's still these uh, extraneous calcs that that we're working with. Uh, still have some bugs we're working out. Uh, for the most part, they are functioning. They are up. There are some bugs that we're working out. Uh, but the 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 main um, thing that we are looking for over the next several weeks is for you guys to really test, uh, especially the uh, the report builder. Uh, we think that that is uh, pretty much up to par to uh, be able to produce reports uh, in the same format, same style, same everything as the, the, the ones uh, from the access program. So we just, uh, and from there we will give you notifications when we think when we feel like okay, all of the extraneous calcs are good, and 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 we're, we don't have pipe calcs yet. We're 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 just we're just concentrating on the AST calcs. The pipe calcs should be coming online shortly after this uh, to complete the uh, API inspector API 653 inspectors toolbox uh, with the same uh, modules that were in the last one. Um, so uh, basically, you just have the drop down. You come here and you click on the uh, uh, calculation you want, and it pretty much looks exactly like the other. The other ones has the same pull downs, the same selections, the same data cells. Okay, um, and uh, quickly you can go back here and, and choose another one. So it's uh, it's, it's a time saver. And then we have the uh, main attraction here, the API 653 AST. Again, just like the uh, access database, you have these tabulated windows uh, with the different components. Uh, and it's also the same pages. You have your design of tank shells, your inspection of tank shells, uh, repair of tank shells. Um, so basically, if you're familiar with the other one, this, this is the exact same format. It just looks a little, has different coloring. <laughs> so, uh, and then we have down at the bottom the same thing. Um, your repair specs, inspection forms, hydro testing, report builder, postal heat treating, and, and API 653 definitions. So all this is basically the same. So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to go into the report builder. And we're going to, well, I'm going to do two things here. First thing I'm going to do is, is do a report from scratch. We're going to start a new report. And then we're going to go, uh, and I just want to point out some of the, some of the things that are different. Um, <clears throat> where before you used to have to go into, uh, well, let me open up the, the other one here. You used to have to go to file table edit to do your copies, copy reports. Well, with the uh, cloud base, um, where am I here? We are. Sorry, but the cloud base. All you have to do now is uh, hit copy report. A new window opens up, and we'll see that at, at, when we get to it here. You name the new report, and then it automatically uh, opens up to that report. And you and you've copied over everything on this base page, and you have copied over everything in the report writer. Okay, the. Uh, Everything that comes under the, the, the report config appendix does not copy over. Uh, one thing that you would immediately see different from the old old file is that where all the sub pages were listed down here in order, and I always recommend that you start from left to right as you do data input because that data is always cascaded forward to be used uh, as you go along. The same basic is. Uh, order is true, but this time all those sub pages that were down below here are now actually in the appendix themselves, and you launch them from the appendix. For instance, if you want to do component TML, it launches from here. You just click that button, and then you start building from here. If you want to do the nozzle TML records, the same thing. All that information you put in here will cast for, cascade forward to any of the uh, calculations, the related calculations. 
this also is a these have drop down and all the calculations that are here are also listed here and will become a part of the report. Okay. So let me back up here. And let me start. Uh, we're going to go ahead and start a, a report. I'm going to go ahead and first thing you want to do is hit the plus sign up here. Uh, name the report. And just start filling in. Um, start filling in your uh, cells as you normally would. Across the top here, go left to right is always the best way to do it. Uh, again, this is the same setup. If you don't have in here a list of one of the inspectors, then you would go to your asterisk here and then you would enter them here just like you would on the, uh, the program. Um, one thing you want to remember to do as you go along is to, to save as often as you can think about it. Um, with the exception of this initial data entry, you want to wait before you hit the save till you get uh, most of your data in here because what it's going to do the first time you save, all, all, these, all this information here that's within brackets, tank ID, city, state, year, um, the date, uh, the uh, applicable code, all that is actually going to automatically update the first time you save with the information that you put in here. So you want to hold off hitting the save button until you've gotten through most of this data and then when you do hit the save button all this data will be updated and then after that the, uh, it will be disengaged from any uh, automatic updates and you'll, you would have to uh, do it manually. So I always suggest, you know, left to right and then columns. Do your left column, then your next column, then next column, next column. All the information that you put in here, the data is going to be cascaded forward. So I'm going to go ahead and start putting in some data here. While you're putting in the data, maybe you can ask for a question. Yeah, if anybody has any questions at this point, uh, yeah, go ahead and uh, let, let me let me hear from you. Okay. No questions? Jeff, yeah, this is Tom. Uh, I have a question. Uh, how is this used if you can't get contact with the, uh, with the Internet when you're in the field? Well, right, right now, uh, for the beta testing, the, the, only, the only way you can do this is have a connection. So you would have to print out your uh, forms, your field forms, uh, just like you would from the regular program. Uh, you would just, you know, from this... Uh, this point here, you just come in here, pick out what forms you need, print them out, and physically fill them out in the field. And then when you did get next to a, a connection, you, that's when you would come and do the data, data input. Okay, uh, there I'm going to drop off the uh, webinar now. Thanks. Have a good night. All right. Good night. 
Now, in this case here, if the, in the insulation thickness, that can only take a numerical value. So if there is no, if there's no, if there's none, you just click in A here. Yeah, Jeff, I think uh, the guy that got off the line uh, probably d did not hear what you should have said next, and that is that this is a beta test version and that our plan is to have those forms uh, on a um, handheld template uh, so that you can, when you do get into connection, it will automatically populate those, those forms. Right. Are there any other questions while Jeff is uh, completing some of the data? During this beta, are we able to fill in the data and stuff like off an iPad or so? If we have connection and stuff on it? Well, it's just, I mean, there's plans for the future to do that, uh, PID or whatever, uh, to be able to do that so that, you know, when you're in the field, you could just have a local software and you can fill in data and then when you get next to con connection it would automatically transfer the data. That is a, a future plan. Uh, but right now, right now really the only thing you got is, is if, if you have a connection to the um, internet, you have access to the program. If you don't, you'll have to use physical filled data sheets and and then do your data input like I'm doing right now when you, when you do get next to it. Okay. Now, will the software be able to yeah, the only, uh, the only download these and from other uh, other programs? Uh, hang, all right. So, uh, hang on just a second. I'll, I'll answer that question in a minute. I see where I just pretty much filled in all this data. I'm going to hit this. If you look down here, all these values and brackets, they're going to uh, automatically update. See that? Boom, 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 boom. That's kind of a safeguard. All right, uh, again, what was your question again? Who, who had that uh, question? The program, maybe not now, but eventually be able to, uh, you'll be able to download D-scan data from other programs? Uh, I'm not sure what you mean um, by uploading. You can do attachments, but right now, anything that you want to add to this, Anything you want to add to this under the under the appendices, you can uh, in, you can uh, make do an attachment in a PDF ver type file type. Uh, is that what you're reference to? Yes. Yes. Yeah. We're getting ready to go through that right now, and uh, I'll be able to show you all that. So right now we just did the uh, basic data here on the front page. I hit save. Um, you're going to want to. Uh, uh, make sure that you remember to save as often as possible here uh, anytime you make changes. Um, right now I need to figure out how many gallons this is. So right now I need to figure out how many gallons so I'm going to do with my engineering calcs. I'm going to put in my feet and height and see how many gallons we got here. So each time you go for your gallons or barrels, you have to go to that to engineering couch and automatically you got to type it all back in again. It doesn't automatically do it once you type your height, your nominal and height in. Um. Once you yeah no you, you got to type it in. This is just a re, this is just a calculator basically. You know I just I just come in here and. Typed in my right. diameter and height, and uh, gives me all kinds of, of output here. You know, square foot areas. This other information maybe for for coding. Right. Coding, but yeah, it's it's here. You just gotta remember it. It's not like it's not like you can like click it and then automatically up uh, fills it in. But that's a good suggestion. And by the way, as beta right. testers, as beta testers, uh, please do that. Say, hey, you know, it'd be certain be nice if this feature, you know, wasn't there. So yeah, absolutely. 
Right. Uh, I, I, I mean, I have other programs that automatically, as soon as you type those data, those, uh, you fill in the data, certain data points and stuff like that, it automatically does your calculations. As soon yeah, as you know, that's, that's, put in. Absolutely. Absolutely good suggestion. That's a simple fix. That's something we can do real quick. Uh, you, you got that package? Yes. Yeah, I mean he's right. We have the, we have the uh, the nominal diameter. We have the height uh, or the fill height is what you would want to use, and then you would uh, that it can automatically calculate it. Simple enough, and then you can have it so it does it in gallons, barrels, whatever. Yeah, hey, good suggestion. Um, um, can we also can it also do like a lot of my clients ask for you know the the nominal height. Capacity and also the safe fill height capacity. Yes, we have that right here. There's your nominal height. There's your safe fill height. Right. Oh, you mean, oh, oh, you mean up here? The calculation. Oh, that's right? to show it. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good suggestion. Yeah. Again, please put all those suggestions down. I'll go to Pankage. He'll talk to me about them, and we'll talk about how to to get them in here. Okay. Uh, Jeff, why don't you, uh, at this stage, I think this is a good time to uh, tell people, because it's a limited number of people that are going to be testing the program, so uh, to please send the, the comments to you and that you would forward those to Pandit. I mean, there just needs to be a single point of contact, and I think you're the best person for it, Jeff, as a subject matter expert. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, and uh, at, uh, it, uh, let me go ahead and just give you. I'm going to give you my personal email to make it simple. My email is J Walling J W A L L I N G at exis e x i s dot net. Um, so that's J Walling at exis dot net. Okay, so it looks like we got just about I everything. You also have a technical toolbox. I think you also have a technical toolbox email address, right, Jeff? I do not. I, I used to, but I, I used used to have issues with it, so we 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 I kinda, it kind of went away. Okay, that's fine. As long as everybody knows how to contact you, or uh, you know, for feedback, uh, anything that's not working, any suggestions like people are making right now, this is excellent. Yes, absolutely. Uh, I mean, I, I mean, you know, sometimes you can't see the forest for the trees. Sometimes, you know, and I uh, get concentrated on other stuff. And there, this is a massive program, so I, I don't stop to think of how quick, how quick and easy that would have been to do that. You know, that's so it's great. That's awesome. Um, all right, so we're finished with all the data input on the front page. At this point, you want to do your logo. Now, in my program before, once you put a, uh, in a logo, it's universal. It comes up on every report, but that's not the case with this. In this one, you, you're going to have to uh, upload a logo and do a, uh, a name, company name, every for every report. So it's a good idea to maybe make like a, 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 a supplementary uh, support folder under MyDocs because that's you know the the quickest way to get the information. Uh, with with some with what the most used logos and signatures and such, so that you'll be able to upload here. Uh, so you, can, in order to do the logos, you have to put in the company name, and uh, and then you got to choose a uh, logo, and then you say upload, and then you say save and close. Okay, and so now it's there. And the same for the signature. Choose you got two of them. One in case you need a second signature over here, but normally you just need the one. Okay, and then uh, make sure you hit your save. And I believe you're going to have to hit refresh. Oh, there it is. It did it on save. Okay, um, so you might want to review this cover text, make sure it says what you want it to say, and you can always edit it, say whatever you want it to say, if you if you if you think you know you needs to be changed. Uh, and then you uh, from here, what I normally I would normally wait to do the report last because I want to make sure I've done all my evaluation with all my UT data and such first in case we have issues. So right here, now we're going to go to the uh, report config uh, appendix. And as you can see, we're doing a brand new report, and it defaults to some of the most commonly 
associated uh, documents and data forms uh, associated with an out-of-service inspection. You always, pretty much what should have your component TML record, nozzle TML record, uh, appendix B. <laughs> we did switch this around from from the previous version, so it's because of the order, the, the information cascading, it will need to cascade from in this order. Uh, under appendix B is your mechanical integrity calculations, and normally, normally it defaults to your shell, your roof, your floor, your nozzles, and your shell settlement, but you can add as many as you want, uh, and they will all be a part included in, the, in the, the print of this report, whereas before the only, there was just a, a given set that was associated with it, and you would have to do the extraneous calcs and then uh, insert them into the report later. Well, this one... Now you have the, the whole repertoire is at your disposal. You just choose which, whatever else you need is for the evaluation, and it becomes a part of the report. Okay. Yes, I, have a, I have a short question. Jeff, yes, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Jeff, yes, can you change the uh, inches and Fahrenheit and stuff like that into meters and Celsius? Yes, you can. Um, on the front here, you, if you're a, if you commonly use meters, yeah, you you can you can change right. it to meters. Okay. Yes. Uh, and and any and if there's any other particular type of units that you want to use, uh, if you talk to uh, our um, pro, uh, programmer, he, Pankaj, he, he can set, he can help you show you how to set that up. So right. that's that's very viable now. Good. Okay, so uh, we have your components, your TML records, whatever calculations you may need need to support this report. Drawings. Uh, right now, my my launch button is not working properly. Uh, in the old report, you could launch um, some templated. Um, uh, CAD drawings, okay, if you have a CAD program, I have Excel or CAD, which is identical to AutoCAD, and it opens AutoCAD, and has the same, uh, it has the same functions, same commands, keyboard is identical, seamless, and it has a DWG tag uh, that has all these inserts, these block inserts, two scale nozzles, two scale ladders, two scale shells, and all that. But for some reason, uh, uh, we haven't got that functioning uh, properly yet um, on, on, on this one, but we will work that out. But otherwise, you can just uh, upload it, you know, however you guys have been doing your drawings in the past. Um, if you do have the old program, you have, you have the files accessible to the files, the templated files. You can still use those. And this, do the drawing and save them in the PDF and then attach them here. Okay, just click, uh, upload the files and you can attach them. Uh, here's the checklist. It's somewhat similar to the, to the, uh, the old, oh, excuse me. Um, <clears throat> you gotta launch it from here. Uh, you have the three, you actually have three windows uh, for a predetermined type of uh, checklist. And you basically fill it out the same way. Go through here, do your X's and such. Uh, and, and whichever one's applicable, you just click up here. Uh, and then uh, if it's not applicable, you just don't click it. It does not show up in the report. Okay. And you have two, the in-service checklist for API, the out-of-service checklist for API, and the uh, Still Tank Institute. And this one here is, is one that uh, was developed by me. Uh, you can always develop your own and, and put it in here. Uh, SDI doesn't really have a, a checklist for the, uh, the certified checklists. Okay. Uh, in any one of these, you can also upload your own files. If you don't, if you have calculations that say you a particular calculus stress analysis that you did that's not part of this repertoire, you did it in, X, in a, 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 a X Excel format. Uh, you can print that PDF and upload it and include it in the report right here. So that's true for any one of these. You can always develop your own and add it to the set in the order that you want it. We also have photographs. Now this is 
a lot different from mine. Previous previous one, we just had a link to a Word file that opened up, and you you just worked it in Word. Now this is uh, inherent to the program, and you just click uh, here uh, to uh, let's see which one it is. Uh, yeah. This will show you all the photographs that are already uploaded. Oh, this is once it's already uploaded. Okay. Yeah. All right. So you really you have to come in here, choose your photograph, uh, put your title here, subtitles here, uh, text, and then choose it, and then upload it. Do the same. Upload it's quicker. It does automatically sizes them and formats it, so you don't have to go through that. Uh, and it's uh, always looks the same for every every report. All right, and then you have uh, manufacturer's data sheets. Of course, those would be supplied to you. MSDS sheets, tank data sheets uh, should be supplied to you uh, in PDF format. And this is just how you, you would just upload the PDF in the order that you that you wanted. Over here, you have your NDE records again. Mm -hmm. in Hello. Format. Yes. Yeah. Somebody have a question? Okay. And and then we have Appendix H here, which um, is for every uh, any kind of other additional supplement doctor documents that you might want to add to the report. Um, if there is, if it's this, if this is a report, and let's say it was visual only, you didn't do any UTs. Uh, let's say it was an external inspection, they didn't want UTs. Then all you have to do to not include those is unclick the applicability check up here and here, and this will automatically make this your Appendix A. No more moving them around and copying and pasting up like like you had to in, in my old one. Okay, here if you didn't want this, then you would have to make Appendix A. You'd have to move everything, cascade everything forward, and, and delete and fill in the spaces here. Whereas here, all you have to do is uh, is click the applicability. Do you have to change the order around? It changes the order around. Yes. Oh, no, you, can you, can you, you like if you want the drawings before it? No, you, you, no, the order is kind of set. Okay. Jeff? Jeff? Yes. The uh, question is that I have some customers that where we normally do, we take the old report and we make a new report. But in the new report, we compare the old reports and the data we collected at that time and make, you know, all that um, the calculations. Maybe I'm jumping a little bit ahead. But can you, in this report, generate um, calculations-wise so for remaining lifetime stuff like that from the previous report? Can you just put that in and automatically uh, drags out those uh, numbers? No, I mean, I mean, you can do it on a, on a certain scale, but not not like what you're talking about. Not like what a uh, normal uh, asset tracking database would do. No, right. like will you like CML per CML and all that? No. No, right. but what but what you could do is let's say you are benchmarking, you have benchmarked data, and you want to compare it for something that was done ten years ago. Then you could change this from you know the age to previous inspection, say ten, and then when you get to your uh, CML data, I'm sorry, and then under here instead of putting in the nominal, you would put in what the reading what that reading was ten years ago. But you, as you can see, it's only one single reading. So if if your you know your uh, your remaining life was based on a on a uh, the lowest reading that you had last time, uh, let's say you took you know 20 readings on the shelf force one and you used the lowest one to base your remaining life, well then that's what you would put here, the same thing. Okay, but that's the limit of it. Uh, other than that, it does. This is not a asset tracking database. It's just a single report, and very rarely will you would you even need to really do that on storage tanks. I mean, if you had a, if you have an area, uh, some areas. There, I mean, I know there is some tanks that maybe have, uh, let's say, uh, vapor space that is eaten up pretty quick. Then you can do that, uh, you know, separately in a spreadsheet somewhere and add it to the report. Oh, okay. Oh, just a question. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Other than that, you you would need an asset tracking database. Which, if you're interested in that sort of thing, uh, uh, Joe can help you out there too. <laughs> All right. Okay. So let's go ahead on back here and just start this. I'm going to show you some of the features. Okay. Right now, I've chosen everything I want here. 
Uh, let me just look at whatever I got applicable here. Yes, I, I got everything I, I, except, well, this one I do not want to be applicable. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to take that off. And now this one went to Appendix F, and I don't have an Appendix A, so I'm going to do a save here. Always remember that when you change things, you try to save as much as possible. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and start putting in my data here. Now, what I'm going to do here, I'm going to base this on, let's say I, I did uh, some uh, UTs uh, from a data logger. So um, what I'm going to do here is first I'm going to develop uh, uh, the amount, the uh, number of line items I need here. So I'm going to do my first one so I fill in some data here. I'm going to check that. You Make sure you check it. And then I'm going to hit this duplicate. In this case, I have actually a preliminary, this is going to be a preliminary, uh, a report from a, that I've already done, so I've already got data for this. So I'm going to, uh, I, it looks like I have 22 CMLs under the component thickness measurements. So I'm going to click this off 22 times. All right, so there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, I think that's 22. And uh, even like before, you see that there's always going to be this ghost. And you can see uh, it's just a ghost uh, one there. So if you wanted just to, to not copy and you just wanted to do entry, you could just do entry there. Uh, but so I have 22, I have 22 uh, uh, line items here. And what I want to do now, I'm going to export because I want to be able to uh, bring in some data log. data from the data log. Open up my Excel, uh, my access. I'm going to put it somewhere. And like I, I said before, you want to really um, put this in a, a MyDocs uh, uh, folder that says AA. So it's one of the first ones here. All right. And um, I'm going to save it here as AST component TML export. It's going to overwrite the one I already have there. Yes. Okay, and then I'm going to uh, open my other file that I downloaded from, let's say, uh, <clears throat> uh, Panametrics to an Excel spreadsheet. Okay. And this, let's say, this is my uh, data, my data uh, from the uh, from the um, <coughs> from the data logger. So I'm going to copy and paste it into my exported okay, save it, and then I'm going to bring it into. And for every number that is listed in the Excel spreadsheet, it will overwrite that number here. If, if it's a number that's not here, it will add it. So now I'm going to choose that file. And then I'm going to import it. Voila. Um, yeah, of course, the option to that is to put them in here single, uh, singularly. And you can, if you have a you know, common amount of uh, components that you normally use for a, a report, you can <clears throat> always use that temp import that template file as well. Okay, there we go. And again, this T actual will, will always be the lowest of that line. Okay, and then when you and you you're gonna whenever you do that, whenever you import here, you you want to come in uh, and click on this CML data and open this form. It's just like the previous one. You see, these are empty here. As soon as you open this and close it, it's going to automatically be populated. See there. So that, it, that that information can cascade forward, and what that is for course one 
is everything that has course one here, it's the lowest of all of them. So it's, it takes the lowest of each component to base it on a conservative, a conservative remaining life estimate. Always remember to save. Okay. Uh, if you want to preview it, uh, again, uh, you have your choice. You have a, a, a printer here that shows Word or PDF. I always like to look at it in the PDF. That's uh, where I'm going to normally go to when I print. Uh, there are certain circumstances where maybe you need it in Word type, so you can edit it because of certain circumstances. But um, there you go. That's what it's going to look like in the report. And there's a PDF version of it. Pretty much looks the same as, as before. Uh, up here you have where you can, you know, do add individual line items. You have where you can save, and we just showed you how to use the copy. This is for deleting any one of them. And you could actually say delete multiple, so you can select several and delete this for your printing. And that is this is to scroll back. There's your back arrow. So once you're finished here, you make sure you save everything. Then you can go back and do the same thing for the nozzle record. Okay, uh, in mine here I have uh, I have uh, up my CMOS go up to 24. They start at 23, and you'll notice that when I do this first one here, uh, it, I'll make the defaults of the age. You can change that. Um, this is going to uh, as soon as I save, it's going to update and continue. The sequence, see there, it automatically went to 23 because my last CML under the component data was 22. So you don't have to you worry about that. Uh, I'm just going to choose anything here because I'm going to do the same thing. I had a data logger, let's say, and uh, I want to um, um, I want to uh, do uh, import export. Then I'm just going to fill in this so that there's something there, okay? And then I'm going to click this off until I get to 42, to 42 count. So there's 23, 24. And 42. So I got 42 here now. I'm going to go ahead and uh, export this to the same file. And uh, it, 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 it's essential that the report number is exactly the same as the report that you're trying to import this into. Here, here is simulating. This is my data log file. Save it, and then import it into the program. And there you go. Always want to make sure I save. You can always view it in the USCML data. And so we're uh, <clears throat> we're done with this. Uh, we're trying to go in order, go from A, B, C, and go from you know uh, in, in order that, in which it's listed. 
All right, now I'm going to come over here and we'll start my AST shell remaining life calculations. All that data cascaded forward from the front and from where I just put in that data. So quite simply now I just got to choose my material for those five courses. I've got to put their height in here. And that's it. Yeah, all the rest of the data looks like I must have <coughs> must have had one of them named six courses there for that to show up. Okay, I'm going to save that. I'm going to go back and see where I had must have had six courses named here. Yep. Yeah, I had a sixth one here. Should not have. Got to reopen this so it re uh, looks at that data. Hmm. It looks I mean, at the top also. It has CRSS six value, four six value. And that, this actually should have been empty. Pa package this. Whenever we change this, this looks like it's got a ghost in there. That whoops. What happened here? Uh, that needs to. That needs to make sure that comes out of there. Jeff and Pandit, if you can explain to them how they can gain access to the cloud-based program. Package. Yeah. Uh, so I've already shared the details uh, with the Robert. Uh, he'll be sending you all the user IDs. Uh, there is a link uh, that Jeff is already accessing. So you just go to that link, and you will have your user ID and password. You will just log in into that system. That's it. It's very simple, and then you can you know play around with whatever you need. If you feel any difficulty somewhere, you can contact either Jeff or Robert or myself anytime. Um, Robert, you have all the details, uh, the login details for all the users who are attending the session today? Yes, everything so was sent out this morning prior to the webinar. To yeah, yeah, okay. So here we are, I corrected where I accidentally had a sixth shell course in there. Uh, this acts exactly the same as my uh, original program. If you have values that are in uh, within 10 years remaining life, this this uh, cell will come up orange. Uh, if it's zero remaining life, it will come up red. Uh, same with the safe fill height. The safe fill height has to be uh, above what we have designated up here. Uh, so it will come up red. Uh, so basically functions the same way. You have alternate S, same functionality if you want to overwrite that for any reason. Alternate team in if you say you want to use nominal minus corrosion allowance or, or, or a you know, given team in. Uh, so it has all the same as, aspects as, as the other one. Now, here are these drop downs your E, your joint efficiency, your uh, specific gravity. If you change these values here in these subforms, that will change it all the way back on the base page. So usually there should be no need to change it. You didn't determine what it was from the front page, but just be aware that for these particular types, if you change them here, it's going to change it throughout the program. Okay, make sure you, you hit save. And then we're going to go back and now we're going to go to the roof. And you had all that information cascade forward. Uh, the only thing you have to do here is put in when your next inspection is. Select your material category, carbon steel slash chrome steel. And if you have a pressure relief setting, uh, put that in here because it may affect your T-min. Okay. It doesn't automatically default to 0 0.09 like a lot of folks choose because you have uh, when you have a pressure release sitting on there, you're actually creating a little bit of pressure, and that pressure is being countered by the weight of the roof, and, and so you need a certain minimum thickness to counter that weight. Uh, 
Okay. Uh, make sure you save. And as you notice, the more more information that you put in here, the less information you need to put in these subforms. Okay. Again, all the information that cascaded forward here. Choose which is applicable. Normally, your gen general plates, your critical zones are normally applicable. Usually, your annual plates are not, but I'm going to go ahead and say yes. Select whether or not it has a liner, whether or not it's P, whether or not the liner is 50 mil or greater. Actually, I didn't mean to say yes to these. <laughs> And then if it has RPB, I'm going to go ahead and say yes to that one. This one may be an unknown, but I always put in zero just for our default. And everything else should be correct here. And this information you get from your, your technician out there who did the MFE, I'm just going to put it here, um, make up some stuff here. <coughs> And this is a default, but you can always iterate this if you're having issues with your remaining life. Okay. And I always suggest that if you change any, if you have an issue with any of these, you should use the same value for your remaining life if you, across the board. And then we said yes to our annual plate, so we're going to, uh, this is a 120 foot tank, more than likely that annular ring is probably three quarters of an inch. So I'm again make up some value here. Okay, I'm going to make sure I save. Looks like everything is acceptable. Okay. Any Anybody have any questions up to this point? Again, this is, it works exactly the same as the previous one. All right, now we're going to go to our nozzles. And uh, this one should pretty much, now Pankage, I know we fixed this in the report. So if I, if I uh, look at the PDF, those do not, those show up as blank. So that's fine for the report. Okay, but that also needs to be the true here. See this showing up red, which is not true. This is not true. And then you got to go to another thing to type it back in there again to get your calculator, you know, safe. So, okay. All right, so just note that these need to be blank, not because they cannot be coming up red. It's giving you a false indication here. Yeah. Okay. But okay. Okay, so we're done with that. Uh, we're going to spend a little time here on shell, shell Settlement Survey, show you guys uh, what what we got here. This is relatively new to what you guys have uh, have in the old program. Um, although the latest version did have this in it, but not as automated as, and not with as much uh, very bad uh, options as you have in this one. So basically when you come in here, it's going to default to eight points, but you can always add points by hitting this add point here. Okay. Um, and what I'm going to, in, my, in this case, and we also have an option here of single set or double set. Uh, you know, it's always, it's my recommendation that if you're going to go do a settlement survey, you're going inside this tank, you're going to set up your, you're going to set up your, uh, your uh, transit. And what, what you really want to do is find the highest point in that tank and that make that your number one. I know most people have a set, they go to the north side and they make that number one and they go around. But that, but to get the best fit and to get the most accurate um, evaluation, you really do want to try to find that highest point in the tank, find the center of the highest point because you can come off to the left or right of the high point and it'll still be the same until it starts dropping. So you find the center of your highest point, 
make that your number one elevation and then start from there and I also recommend that you do double set. Yeah, this is a 120 foot tank. All you, the minimum that you have to take to do this evaluation is 12 points and you always want to take even points. So if there's 125 and it comes to 13, then you'd want to take 14 points. You always want to do an even number of points. Uh, that's per code and that's also the, the, the evaluation to be accurate needs an even a number of points. And then, uh, and then the second thing that's also recommended by the code, Appendix B, is that you take a double set. Take twice as many readings, so you double it. If, you, if, if the minimum amount is 12, take 24. That will refine the uh, evaluation and it will give you more points and a more refined evaluation if you have to take the next step. In the, in the case where R square is less than 0.9, then the cosine curve is not uh, applicable. Okay, according to Appendix B, if you have a, an R square less than 0.9 and you, you use it, then you're actually outside of the code, you're, according to the code. Uh, you actually have to go to the next step in Appendix uh, B 2.2.5. This is B 2.2.4 with the cosine curve. So let's do that. Let's go ahead. I'm going to go ahead here and put in my information. Well, first thing I'm going to do is add points. I, I, want, to, I want 24 points. I'm at 8, so that will be 9, 10, So I think that's 24 points. I think I clicked it 24 times. Well, I guess I clicked faster than it could count. <laughs> Let's see what we got here. All right, 16. There we are. We got 24 points. Now I'm going to add my elevations. Bear with me here.
Okay. All right, I'm a, okay, I got my double, double set chosen here. I've got all my data in. I'm going to hit calculate. All right, it looks like my R square is in the red. It's less than 0.9, which says, tells me that this cosine evaluation is not applicable. That's what my cosine curve looks like compared to my actual. Okay, uh, so at this point, I'm going to have to identify, uh, according to the code, what you want to do is identify your, your points where you have a, a uh, significant change in direction, which these are pretty obviously. We have one here at 18, one here at 11, one here at 2, looks like one here at 23. So I'm going to pick those points, 20, let's see, 2, 23, 18, and 11, and I'm going to come over here and put an X in the points that have a change in direction. And you can reference paragraph 3.2.2 in the API appendix, API 63 appendix B. And uh, so what do we have here? I'm going to put my caps on. I'm going to make them capital X's. We said 2, 11, and 23. Okay. And then I'm going to hit next step. Oh, I might have had to have saved. Uh, let's see if it tells me to save here. Well, it didn't. Hopefully, I don't lose this because I didn't save. And then we're going to, uh, it looks like we got everything is uh, sat here. That's good. And, and the graph right here looks like this. And that's it. Simple enough. Uh, your report's going to look like this. Okay. And you will uh, it will also print out it will print out both this report and the uh, initial data set. Okay. And what what I and it will print both the, the graph and the uh, data evaluation here. Uh, my recommendation is that when you when it does print out that you delete the second page of this initial report because it's not relevant really. All you need for, from this one is to show where you did the data input put and it and the R square was less than 0.9. So it's going to print out four pages. This graph, which will show you the R square and how that this is not applicable. We did this evaluation. We found the R squared is not applicable. This next page is irrelevant. You can delete it from the report and then you'll have follow, you'll follow this graph with the other graph and the data set that is applicable to that evaluation. Okay. Uh, anybody have any questions on this one? I know this is probably a little bit new to you guys. Most companies don't do this next step uh, as they should. There's not, and my program is the only program out there to date that that will do this. Now, on your survey, when you do your calcs and stuff, it doesn't automatically go to the lowest reading for your first uh, point on your graph. You have to go and click your your changes and stuff, and then then it'll go to it. To no, no, make this one, this one's right. automatic. You try, you are talking about doing the best fit. Yes, right. if you if you look at the graph. Look where it is at point twenty. This is the best fit. It, what what the program is going to do? It's going to do it when you see it doing a little timing thing there. Whoops! And it's taking us a little while. What it's doing? It's going through an iteration and it's comparing every scenario 
20, all 24 scenarios to that cosine curve and, and finding the best fit, the highest R square. So yes, it's automatic. Where my old program, you had to do it manually, this program iterates it and does it automatic. Okay, now what about the, now you have another one for the floor settlement, right? Yes. You're talking about the edge settlement? Not edge settlement, uh, your floor settlement, where you do it from the in, uh, internal settlement? Oh, uh, we the shell every 10 feet out? No, I do not, I do not have anything for that. Um, I mean, okay. that gives you, that gives you a, prof, a nice profile, but other than that, uh, it doesn't really give you the information you need to do edge settlement because you there you got to be you got to get specific information and I do have that evaluation in here but you you would have to concentrate you'd have to find where you think there's these the issue is find uh, some parameters and do do the data input for those those local spots. Well, no, no, not just local spots where you go inside like you did here the 24 points on the outside of the tank. You go yes. do the internal with the 24 spots, and then you move out a foot, two foot, ten foot, all the way to the center. That gives you how your floor is uh, flexing and stuff when the uh, product is in it. It's sure, separate sure. from like, your heat settlement. I understand, I understand, but my program does not do that. That, that gives okay. you a profile of the floor, lets you know which way, like you said, which way your low spot is, and gives you a good, good sure. uh, cross-section profile of the floor. My, my program doesn't do that. It never okay. has. Never has done it. So. Okay. Uh, that's something that Pancake. That's that is something a lot of companies like, and it it, it is useful. Uh, if you have, but 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 mostly it's useful to tell you where you. I mean, you can still get that from here. I mean, you can still get that from this graph. You'll know where your your low spot. Yeah, there's your, there's, there's, well, there's your low spot eleven right there. But uh, well, what I'm looking for is the low spot towards the sump. Sure. Okay. I'm not. I mean, you know, that's like I said. That's not something that's really uh, that that my program does. Uh, it's something that we we definitely can do. Package. Uh, that's something that maybe we we can look at uh, developing. All right. Yeah. Sure. Okay. I mean, it, I'm sure it's simply done. So. Yeah. Uh, any any other questions, especially in regards to the next step evaluation? It's quite simple. You take your if you don't if you don't make your point nine, then you're going to need to go to your next step. To go to your next step, you need to identify the uh, points on along your actual readings that show a, a significant change in direction. And and those points, once you have identified them, you just put an X across from their related uh, point. And quite simply, just hit the the uh, next step, and it does all the calculations and everything for you. shows shows you what is what is satisfactory and what is not. Hey Jeff. Okay, Jeff. It's uh, it's been about an hour, so. Just well, I, I mean, we have a time limit here, Joe. Did we say did we say it was going to be an hour? No, there's no time limit. I just wanted to let you. You're, you're breaking up, Joe. <laughs> but um, no, I, 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 we're, we're coming to the end of it anyway. I mean, we I think we've gotten through the most part of it. Let me just show them a little bit more here and show them about the printing. Because, yeah, we've gone through most of it here. Most of this stuff's kind of identical. Uh, the, the drawings, as I was saying, you would just... Uh, do your own drawing in your AutoCAD or in Excel or whatever program that you use and uh, come in here and uh, well of course you would print it to PDF first and then you would attach it this way just once it's in PDF you come in here you choose the file you upload it and now it's attached to the uh, to the report uh, same thing for uh, well your checklist of course you're going to want to Come in. Oops. I'm going to come in here and go through the checklist like you normally would. Uh, same, same, same means as we had last time. I'm not going to go through all this. I'm just going to click do that. Click that one there so it's included. Make sure you save it. Um, 
photographs. Okay, we go in here. We're gonna we're gonna call this uh, picture one. I'm just gonna do this real quick. But you, whatever your whatever you have, whatever subtitles you want to give them, and then you go and you pick your photos. I'm just gonna pick some random photos here. Can you also explain that this is because it is cloud-based that multiple people can be working on the same report? Yeah, because it's cloud-based, multiple people can be working on the same report. <laughs> now, on the pictures, are we able to put more of a description? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm just saying pick one, pick two, pick three. You can do whatever you want. No, I mean, how, how many characters can you put in that? So I when I do my pictures and stuff, I'll, I put identifications. What it is, what depth, this and that, and then it also goes in my recommendations. That same picture. Okay. okay. Um, the final would be, yeah, the final would be like close to 100 characters, maybe or 40 characters only. Uh, but the description itself, like if you want to type in something, that is not included in here. But we can add if it is required, and you know, uh, description text box wherein you can add some information, and then it will be printed along with the the picture. Okay, and in the report, do the pictures go at the end or uh, at each section, like your floor, your shelf, your roof, your novels? It is at the each. No, 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 no. This it's whatever order you do it. Yeah. No, no. Okay, so wherever I put the pic, I can change the pictures where they go, not at the end of the report. I'm no, not sure what you. I'm not sure what you. You're, I'm not sure what you're oh, asking. So after you after you upload the pictures into it, you save them, your description, whatever. In the final report, those pictures are shown in it at the end of the report or at each section. Like these are floor pictures, these are shell pictures, these are roof pictures. Does it put it within that section? Uh, no, this is this is is just under the appendices uh, under photos. So just, it, okay. right here is the photos, I mean it's and it comes under appendix I'm sorry. Okay. Let's see. Hang on. Um, let's see. Yeah. It's so. So in in the report, just like just like this, it's exactly as this report. It, it's a, a certain okay. appendices that it comes under, and then and it's all in order that, in the order that you uh, that you uh, put it in. Okay. I also have another question for you, Jeff, from uh, Matt Baker. They're having some mic issues. Um, but their question is, uh, when choosing the change in direction for the R2 value, can you also pick the valleys too and not just the peaks? You can, put, you can pick whatever value you want, but to be in accordance with the code, the code says to choose the uh, peaks that have the, the uh, significant change in direction. But yeah, you can you can pick whatever you want. You know, I mean, you know, I, that, maybe an engineer more acquainted with the stress stress analysis of, of storage tanks could probably do that. That's not something that just a normal user would would want to do. Okay, and then the follow up question was: Do the R square value changes? Do that? Does it change? Yeah, I believe that's what he's asking. Once you, the only way that R square would change is if your if your the the data points, the elevation points that you put in there, if you change them, it doesn't change the uh, when you're putting X's to go to the next step. The, the R square value is no longer a uh, is no longer uh, applicable. That R square value is comparing your uh, co your per your your cosine curve, which is a predicted settlement in, in a perfect plane, to the actual settlement that you guys recorded from the field. So if you got if it does not have a if it does not come within ninety percent of that cosine curve, then 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 the cosine curve is not applicable, and it's all based on your actual readings. The only way to change that R square is to have diff is to change your readings, but I mean you you know that's not a that's not really something you would do. All right, so now the next thing here is my appendix F and the E records. I'm going to link those up.
And then the, the last appendix we don't have. We're not, we're not putting anything. So that's it. This report is done. I'm going to save that. I'm going to go back out to the front here. Well, it's not done. You still have the report write-up. And basically, <laughs> the same thing as the previous program. You have defaults that automatically come in here. It's my philosophy. It's easier to edit uh, something that's already there than to uh, start from scratch, especially trying to keep your order and uh, paragraphs and your spacing and all that. So we have a default, then you can uh, overwrite it, whatever you need to do. All right, make sure you save. And it's the same thing. You have your, your findings here, your recommendations here, your executive summary here. You update it to, to say whatever you want it to say. And uh, this um, right here is, uh, is uh, calculating your next inspection due dates for internal visual, visual, the external visual, your UT, based on a maximum allowed by the code. You can always change that to be whatever you want it to be uh, if you have any issues. It doesn't automatically account for the issues. You have to account for the issues. Here you want to, um, I entered it incorrectly I guess. Yeah. Um, uh, make sure you save. Uh, Pancakes, look what just happened. You see it automatically went back to the max. We, this needs to be editable. Oh, okay. okay. Yes. Um, so we need to get that fixed. <laughs> and then, of course, you want to trans, you want to also put those dates down here. Okay. So they show up in the executive summary. Okay. All right. So um, we save that. And we say we've, we're done with this report and we want to print it. Come back out here. You have two print buttons. This print button is, is just for the first four pages of the report. So you can kind of preview it. Or if you want to print it out to replace it, whatever. And you have a choice. And this one here with the F is for the full report. So everything that's attached and everything that you did in the appendices will now come out in the order that you have them listed here in this report with the click of one button. Now uh, you have your choice of doing Word, of course, if it's in Word, anything you have attached in PDF, of course, will not come out. You, you would just have to do your editing in Word, print it to PDF, and then add those after the fact. But if you print it in PDF, then everything that you have attached in the appendices will print all at once. So I think I got everything I need here. I'm going to go ahead and uh, Print this out. Jeff, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, I have a question. Now, I'm 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 placed in Europe. And I'm, I don't know if you're familiar with the with the, with the code it's called Imua. With with what? All oh, right, you haven't heard about it. Well, Imua is the European standard, which is pretty much the system of API six by three, but it's got some few changes because of the, the snow load and stuff like that. Um, would it be possible to put that standard in the um, to make a report on that? On that? Well, I don't think, I mean, I don't know how, what, what the standard, I've never seen the standard, so I don't know how it would affect the basic well, report. I mean, it, I can see where it, it, it can affect the design of a tank, but the evaluation of a tank, uh, unless there's some ad, a, added sections that address certain scenarios that they would normally want them to, to, to evaluate, I, I mean, the only thing I could suggest is, uh, Give us the details and let us see the re that, that section. And if it's applicable to a normal API 653 report, then I'm sure I'm sure that we can we can probably work with that. I mean, I, I guess about 80% is the same, 
but then you have like 20% where they focus more on, well, there are some criteria where the, um, the calculations is changed a little bit because they're more restricted in some areas and they have uh, more focus on the uh, on the foundation and also the well seam on, on, on the roof to shell drive. And so that's some of the big areas of interest uh, of well, what we do in Europe. But I can see this as a very good tool. Well, we, we would we, yes, we would be very interested to understand how it is different for Europe and uh, if we have to have a separate version, European version, but the important thing is for us to understand the differences. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So if, I like, if I can send you a copy of the, the work, would you like to look through it and see what the difference is? And I can tell you what the difference is. Well, I, I would like to see that, but I would also like to see one of your reports. Show me yeah. a typical out-of-service inspection report so I can see the elements involved in it and, and you know, what the differences are and how, you know, how reasonable it would be to, to, to work with them. Yeah. All right. I'll, I'll, I'll gather something uh, and I'll send it, ship it to you. Okay, great. You, you guys have my email. All right, so here's the report. Here's the final report. As you notice, it took a little while, of course, a lot less than for, for you to do it uh, as in the old program where you, you know, have to piece it together. But uh, you'll see that it basically does look the same. Same formatting, same everything. And it's, in, it's already sequenced. You don't have to remember which sequence to put it in as long as you it's going to go with the sequence that you had listed in the uh, appendices. A uh, pan, uh, pan kedge. Um, I, well, okay, we'll have to talk about this. This is showing... Uh, yeah, I got it. Yeah, we're going to have to talk about how this is listed, but that's fine. Yes. Um, so here's the uh, here's the shell calculations, remaining life, the fill height. Here's your roof calculations, your your MRT floor calculations. I must have missed something there. I'll go back and take a look at that in a minute. I thought all this said acceptable. I must have changed something. Uh, there's your uh, nozzles. All right, here's what I was talking about. The uh, hmm. hey, package. Something made right here. The uh, R square is not showing, and that's the yeah. that's the the whole point of even having this here is to show that. Yes. Order. All right, and then this page here can be deleted. Um, and I'm not sure how you delete these pages in this form. You probably have to save it. Well, you'll have to save it as the PDF first. So we'll we'll do that in a minute. Um, and there's your next step here. Your drawings, checklist, your photos. Here, so here's the photos. And again, you can always print these out in, in Word first and make any changes that you want. And uh, So everything that I had in there, everything I attached in there, I uh, was able to uh, print out with one click of a button. And, then, and I, I also here, I would not print to PDF. I would save as PDF. And the reason, the reason why is because if you print the PDF, you, you, this thing will not be editable with Adobe Acrobat. If you save this PDF, it will be able to.
So here's the report. Normally, of course, at this point, um, um, well, we want to go in there, like I said before, we want to get rid of uh, that previous I mean that uh, that page, this page here, we can delete. So, so you do show the initial evaluation, or this would normally say R square is less than 0.9. It's a little glitch here, uh, which justified using the uh, alternative, the next step, which is here. Okay, then you would save it, and of course here is also where you would do your header and your footers, uh, your header, I mean your footer for, for, for the pages, page numbering. Okay, so all the pages have a page number now, and then this is also where... Um, of course, you want to save, and then you want to do the uh, save as other, and then reduce the size. Okay, and uh, there it is, less than one meg for this particular one. Does anybody have any questions up to this point? Uh, I mean, we can take a look at the Word file as well. Jeff, we had one question come in while you were doing the presentation. Um, and it has to do, I know that you had touched on uh, using a tablet or or laptop and filling out the forms and coming in later, but someone was asking if the actual um, program site is accessible by a smartphone and whether or not they'd be able to enter the data from the smartphone. I, I, I mean, Package, you'd be the best one to answer that. Package. Try this one yet, actually. Um, yeah, uh, Jeff, we haven't tried it on the smartphone yet, so I'm I'm not sure, but uh, um, well, I can answer that question by tomorrow. I mean, once I'm uh, you know um, get to hear from the team like how they have configured it. If if they have managed that uh, that code, then it should be accessible, and you know we would be able to work on it through smartphone itself. Okay, thanks, Jeff. Thanks, yeah. Josh. Yeah, this is Joe talking. I think the, the the first step was to make the conversion to of one of the the fundamental components of the API toolbox to the cloud, yeah. which will enable us to do these types of things. Uh, this is the first step. We're learning how to crawl before we walk and walk before we run right now. Within the program, can you just print out the calculation uh, sheets? Absolutely. Um, you can either, if that's all you're interested in it, that you can either uh, go to the extraneous calcs and just fill out that calculation that you're interested in, or if you just want to do it from the report. Yeah, for it's just like the just like the pro, my previous program. Uh, you can print out the individual ones from from the uh, the page that you're working in, uh, or you can just go to the extraneous calcs themselves, and it will be listed there. Well, here's the here's the word file. Uh, this right here is for the second uh, signature. If you don't need it, you delete it. You can do all your corrections here. Oh, hey, pancakes! Look at this. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So we need to fix that. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, I'll upload it tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. So everything's edible here. Let's take a look at those pictures. Look at this package. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it has it has a little bit of formatting. I mean, uh, the team is uh, working on it, so we will upload it uh, uh, tonight. Um, okay. 
So the Word file, we were mostly concentrated on the PDFs. Word file has a little bit of work that needs to be done to it. It looks like it's not coming up with the R square either. Mm. That's why we call this a beta test. That's right. <laughs> yeah. All right, so here's your pictures, and I guess anything that you, you, you might need to do that you can't do within the program, you could probably do from here. Looks like you might be limited to just a one line here, but uh, let's see. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Can you resize like the picture? Where do you do that? Let's see. The picture, you, you can you just shrink the picture. Well, if you shrink yeah. the picture, yeah, you can, more space. Like you can resize it. Okay. And then you can add more words of a height. Like yep. Yep. Okay, so there, there you have it for the most part. Um, I guess the only other thing I want to show you guys is um, the ability to copy and basically whatever you want to open whatever report that it is you want to copy you just hit copy report rename it Hit OK, and you're automatically in that report. You see, uh, and uh, the only thing that copies over now this this you're going to have to update manually, and then the uh, write up it comes over. But uh, that's that's it. Everything else is you're doing from scratch. Uh, again, if you want. If it has the same components, then just reopen the previous one, or you could have done this before you copied, and um, do the import-export. This did not show up at the bottom package. Where is that report? So, yeah, so if you wanted to get that the uh, CML components and all, just do the same thing, you would, uh, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. You get in here. You do. You export. Export it, and then change. When you export it, change the um, report number to. Be, it has to be exactly what the new report is going to be, and then change that all the way down through here. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what I named it, but anyway. Uh, And then when you close it out, it brings it in. As long as it's the same exact name, it will uh, it'll come it'll come in and save you some time there building a new one. All right. Um, what else? Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Again, this is a new report, so you're going to have to. Uh, Upload your logo, company name, your uh, signature, and all that. Okay. Um, the, this has a uh, if you have uh, if your company has uh, has a license for five users, and you want folks to be access uh, other those other any of those other five users within your company to have access to this report to be able to change it, then you need to come in here and click the share button and click who you want to be able to share it with and then uh, and then they'll be able to go in and edit it. Say you're out in Timbuktu somewhere in uh, <laughs> some hotel and you started this and you want somebody to QA it and print it out and get it to the client back at the office, then basically you share with them and they'll be able to open it up and edit it and uh, and print it and do whatever they need to on the same basis. All right, so I, that pretty much is all the new aspects of this program. 
we're getting we're, we're going to be working on the extraneous calcs you were asking about you just wanted to print uh, an individual calculation so if you went in here and you just wanted to do the shell calcs you just go into that calculation uh, oh, I'm let me go to the other report I haven't filled out any this is the copy So you would go to that calculation, and uh, you can print it out here, either Word document or PDF. And there you go. It's just the uh, two pages that are related related to that calculation. Um, uh, otherwise, if you're just you're not really interested in doing a whole report, you just want to do an evaluation on a, one particular uh, floor bulge or something, then you can just go right there to that. Uh, start a new one here start putting in your values and your types and all that and it, you'll have that single single report to uh, print out <coughs> and again word document or PDF Okay, uh, we, we are working on the piping calculations. As you see, we have a module down here. We just don't have, nothing's highlighted other than pipe standards, conversions, and engineering calcs. Because uh, we're just starting on that one. My, hopefully, hopefully this one should go pretty quick. We should be able to bring, get this one in, in, uh, in the set uh, pretty quickly because everything's pretty simple there. And uh, we've already been down the road with this one. That, uh, so the programmers are pretty much knowing what to, what to expect. And, and, uh, can be ahead of the curve, so uh, hopefully that won't be too long. All right, that pretty much is the uh, end of the webinar a, today. Yes. Okay, uh, Jeff, this is Joe. Uh, uh, will the beta testers have access to any of the improvements or changes that you guys make on a day-to-day -day basis? Well, I mean, if it's what I've been experienced, yeah, they daily or, or, or every other day or every weekly do whenever they uh, need to upload it. It's universal. I'm pretty sure it will be universal. Is that correct, Pancake? Yeah, yeah. Yes, we will be doing the updates. Uh, you know, once we start hearing feedback or like in, from today's session also, we have two, three bugs that we need to fix. And the word report formatting is also being worked upon. So. Uh, we will be updating it to like every other day or at least twice a week and then all those changes will be reflected at the same time to everyone who is going to use that application. Are we going to try to do that uh, overnight or before morning, before our morning, before yeah. like say before 7 or 6 o'clock so that yeah. we won't interfere with be, anybody? Yeah, yeah, definitely. It will be non-US working times when we will update it so that you know whosoever is using it, he will not face that any kind of problem when we update upload anything on the server because um, if someone is using uh, while we upload uh, then they may face some problems like the connection timeout or something so we will make sure that it, it does happen uh, at a non-US working time okay. and uh, yeah, other than that uh, if you want to show that unit conversions for the same file we can just flip to the metric unit uh, and that way all the all the all the values will be displayed in different units. Uh, like someone had question regarding that unit system. Yeah, report, yeah. And then in the unit set, we will select metric set. Yeah, here all the units will change now. Temperature is changed to degree centigrade, and this is mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See that. And that's uh, throughout throughout here, right? Yeah, throughout the application, yes. So it is TX now. Uh, and then. Everything switched to metric. Uh, that's in that zone. Yeah. I really haven't tested it that much in the metric. I was just trying to work out the bugs. Sure. And then this is the unit system is also further configurable. Uh, you know, whatever user wants, but that is handled through a uh, different product. And but this unit set drop down will be populated as soon as we create a new uh, unit set in the different one. Very good. Yeah. So this is now all in metrics I can see mm, meters, kpa. Yeah. 
Very good. Um, and then uh, also if you want to tell them about that uh, save features stay and leave uh, while they move, they try to move out of the page without saving anything and then the application will give us a pop-up message wherein it, it you know, asks user to save it. All right, so I'm going to change something here and I'm going to try to go uh, over here to the appendix. Now, what this is, what this is basically telling you that uh, there are unsaved changes on the pages. To save changes, click Stay on Page, and click Save Icon on the screen. All right. So whenever you see this pop up when you're trying to get off here, it's because you changed some data, and it's telling you that if you leave, if you want to, if you say leave this page, then whatever changes you made are not going to take. So you need to say Stay on the page, save it, and then you can. In any time it is saved, it comes up with a pop-up saying it was successful. And then you can go over off and, it, and you're, you're good to go. Okay. That's all I guess so. Yeah, and then oh. just remember Okay, well, at this stage... I was just going to say, for the beta testing, we want to concentrate on the report writer. Let's make sure we work those bugs out really good. Uh, if you do go over to these independent calcs, you're going to run into some issues there. We're still working on those, and, and uh, after this morning's sessions, they're going to, uh, they're actually going to do some um, uh, uploading of some stuff they've worked on over the weekend. But probably throughout the, I'd say before you attack attack these heavily, give us a week to try to work those those minor bugs. Out. All right. Well, what we'll do, Jeff. Yes. Can you hear me? I hear you. What we'll do is uh, send out send out another invite, maybe in a week, uh, and that way we can go over any comments that the user group has, any problems they've been having. Uh, so we'll we'll follow up and send out an invite, maybe in a week from now. Uh, is this a good time for everyone, or is this a bad time on a Monday early morning? Yes. Yeah,